we will all offer the prayer of meditation. Almighty Father, by the mystery of God, may we become sheep. By the mystery of God, may we become God's children. By the mystery of God, may we realize rightly and become a man. And may we pass these blessings down to our descendants. May we become someone who has more and more blessings in our late age. May we be patriots to our country and our people. And to those who are calling for world peace, may we be the right example to them. In Jesus' name, we thank you and bless. Amen. God says to preach the gospel. He says to cry aloud so um, so that your voice bursts. Isaiah chapter 58 verse 1. What does he say to cry out aloud? He says to shout out aloud your sins and your ancestors' sins. So what is that? It's because of these things that you cannot meet the Lord. Psalms chapter 32 verse 5 and 6. Out of the mysteries, the great mystery is the mystery of godliness. 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. This godliness, you have to repent of your ancestors' sins in your sins. So let's find Numbers chapter 14, verse 18. Numbers chapter 14, verse 18. So what your ancestors have sinned it goes down three and four generations. So you say that you're repenting. But if you don't repent of your ancestors' sins properly, Korea, you know what's strange? If you talk about ancestors' sins, they call you heretic. It's funny, you see these heretics who call others heretics. But if you call someone a heretic, then you're someone who's saying that you're God. James chapter 4, verse 11 to 12. But there are so many gods in Korea because they all say, oh, that's that's heresy. So, they, so they're making themselves God. I mean, if you're asking for death, what can't you do? But 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 1, if you deny um, the mystery of God, then, and verse 22, if you're outside of Christ, if you don't have faith, you may attend church, but as a demon, you may say, oh, I believe, James chapter 2, verse 19, but he says they're all dog pigs. And verse 17, those people, they're wells, but they're wells without water. Verse 20, those people, it's better that they weren't born into this earth. So, forced repentance, mystery of Christ, the mystery of God. If you hear that and then you depart, you're better off not being born into this world. That's what has been recorded. So, read 2 Peter chapter 2. If you don't have time, um, you know, verse. read chapter 2 and read verse 17. And then, do you know what God says? 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 20. This Bible. It will happen exactly. It is prophecy. So, Pastor Park, when I see what you're doing, I can see that person will receive blessings and that person will be ruined. Be because it's prophecy, it will happen exactly. So, in case we won't believe this prophecy, Numbers chapter 23, verse 19, God says, My words will happen exactly, and it does. If you do forced out repentance, it's not that you're better or worse. It's not that you've sinned or you have a past. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, in Christ, he makes you a new creation so that you become a child of God. If you're a child of God, whatever you pray for, he will give to you. This is the blessing we've come for, to have a new start without a past. It's a new start. Let's say to the person next to us, there is no past. This is the mystery, the mystery of God. There is no past. You say amen, but you're like, oh, yesterday divorced. No. It doesn't exist. There is no past. It's because you're not in Christ. You start to go in, but then but then you, you pop out again. In Christ, there is no past. You're a son of God. You're a new creation. So does God create now or not? Yes, he's doing that. And that's why John chapter 6, verse 29. Believing the one whom God has sent, that is doing God's work. 
you know, you come to church. You know, if you go to a fake church, you know, you say, what work do you do? Believing the one whom God sent, Jesus Christ, his son, Jesus Christ, that is doing God's work. Why? Because John chapter 5, verse 17, God is working even now. He's, the, the son says, because my father works, I work too. So you believing in him, that means you and I are working. And that's why if you go along the street and you heal someone who has disease, that's doing God's work. So if you can heal other people's diseases, you can heal your own. If you can heal your own, you can help others. And that is receiving power. Let's all receive this power. Is this amen? Let's receive this. So you and I, where 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 have we come, and why have we come here? What just to heal my disease, or just to receive my blessings, or to go to heaven, or to pass blessings to my children, or to be a patriot? To do the precious work of 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 contributing to mankind. Well, we can't do it, but it happens by grace. If we do forced out repentance, and Christ enters my heart in Christ. Being forgiven of sins, that is grace. Then you will meet the Lord who helps you. And when the Lord helps you, that is grace. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7. 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 15. You don't even know what grace is. What, you think grace is someone's name? It's not someone's name. Grace is to do four-step repentance, to go inside of Christ. In Christ... Whatever sin it is, God will forgive you. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. So in Christ, to become a new person, a blessed man, Ephesians, so there is no past. But even though you're given this word, if you don't repent, you go back to your past thoughts. You go back to that past. If you attend church and, and someone says, do you have faith? 2 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 5 God says to test to see if you have faith he says to test yourself he doesn't say go ask others do you have faith So God's commandment, he says to test to see if you have faith. He doesn't say go ask others if they have faith. So what is this faith? Only to someone who is in Christ, God gives it as a gift. In Christ, you're someone without a past. Let's find 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. So when you come here, if you're doing according to God's word, then you don't have a past. Where's your past gone? Well, you've been forgiven of your sins, so it's over. So all this time, you may have been a bad fruit, whether from America or, you know, even if you've got sugar put on you or saccharin, you're still a bad fruit. Wherever you go, you know, after people take one bite, they don't want anything to do with you. Once they meet you, they don't want anything to do with you because you're so you're so yucky. So whatever bad fruit you've come at from, you know, from your past, your ancestors, they may have been, you know, some, you may be descendants of a prostitute. Whether I did it or your ancestors did it today, no matter how, you know, old that bad fruit is, if you're cut and grafted in, there is no past. It's a new start. This is what we've come for. There is no past. Our diseases have left. Our personalities change. Your heart has to change for your thoughts to change. Your thoughts have to change for even your actions to change. But if you don't change your heart and you only change your thoughts, that's someone who is double-minded. That person can never depart from evil. So people who say change your thoughts, that's demon talk. It's not by changing your thoughts you have to change your heart. So whatever religion, Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23, they all say your heart's the most important. So they all talk about realizing with your heart, but what's in your heart? Even dog pigs realize. If you, if you, 
If you put a rope through a cow's nose and you pull it and you say, come, then they, they know, oh, if I come, then I'm not going to get hit. So they realize. If you just realize, that's a dog pig realization. So no matter how much you study in the world, you're still, you still have demons, you have, still have all evil. That is elementary, weak based knowledge. Galatians chapter 4, verse 9, James chapter 3, verse 13 to 16. What kind of person am I? What kind of person are you? So why don't you have power? God gives it all. Why why is it why don't you have power coming out? When you have enemies and you entrust to the Lord, it's God who takes care of it. I see how people hit people's children, hit them to make them disabled. Why do you have enemies? So that you can get power. If that's a sign that you're a blessed man. In the world, if if you do well, you may have some token or some some uh, recognition award, or you get a, you get to graduate. But when you become a son of God, then the, it's the demons who slander and curse you. Matthew chapter five, verse one to ten, it talks about the eight blessings. So from verse 3, it talks about the blessings. So once you receive these eight blessings, the sign that you receive the eight blessings is that demons, they start cursing you with lies. And so you start getting enemies. Verse 12, that's when you rejoice. Why? Because if you love your enemies, that's when you receive power. Fakes, the reason why they can't receive power. So who is it that should preach the gospel? Shouldn't anyone preach it? 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 5, it says, only those who have received power should preach the gospel. It's after receiving the Holy Spirit, those who have cast out their demons that are worthy to preach the gospel. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 12. So the true pastor that God has sent is the man of understanding. Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 15. What is understanding? It's to eat 5,000 verses as your food. That is the man of understanding. So you've come here, and as you've lived in the world, if you watch TV, they say, should we get rid of schools or not? They say, you know, people are getting, you know, are getting put into retirement in their mid forties. If you, you know, you companies, you know, if you do that, those companies will ruin. Because if you employ someone in their twenties and straight away you see they're not worthy, you need to get rid of them. That's how that company survives. But if you wait until they're in their 40s, then that company is going to be ruined. If they're not profitable, if they're not worthy to be used, then you need to cut them off straight away. You see these people who, you know, they, they're, you know, those employed at, in companies or government, and then they come into society and they're ruined. If you weren't faithful and you just did, and you just worked um, under, with eye service, then when you come to society, you'll be ruined. Because if you don't do other people's work as your own, then you'll be ruined. You can't receive blessings. Luke chapter 16, verse 12. So whether you had a public, you worked in public office or in some company, if you do that work as if it's your own, then which, which, which boss is going to um, fire you? It's because you didn't give it, give them profit. That's why they cut you off. And if that company doesn't cut you off, then they'll be ruined. So more and more, things are going to shine. How are we going to live? Whether you come out of a company or public office, if you do according to the word, you will succeed. If you're giving benefit to others, who's going to hate that? So you coming here, why are you sitting here? This lacking servant, I don't have time to be laying hands on each person. But I give the Father's word as food. If you eat a tonic or eat vitamins and you receive nutrients, if you're reading 5,000 verses, then miracles will happen. Your problems will be solved. There will be workings in your children. So this is the blessing we've come for. Is this our man? Because this is food. Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3. So if you have 
not even 50 side dishes. And then you're writing it, writing this word down. You know, you think you're going to live? You need wisdom to, to go to heaven. But wisdom rests in the heart of understanding. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 33. You have to have a heart of understanding. That's when miracles happen. So you've come here. You may not know, but that's the word that you're reading now. So as you listen to the word, demons depart. As you listen to the word, your cancer is healed. You listen to the word and you receive blessings because there are workings with the word. You've all come here to receive this power. Is this amen? So if you're going around like this, then you're asking for debt. And so God says, you beware. Those places without the mystery of God, they are spoiling your soul. They're going to hell. Colossians chapter 2 verse 8. So you may go to fix your destiny, but you'll end up dying. So you need to wake up. So we have all these regrets and, you know, we can't find a way to receive solutions. So what does God say? So we don't have time. Let's find Numbers chapter 14, verse 18. We didn't get to read it, did we? So if you list, if you obey God's word, then a thousand generations will receive blessings. That's Exodus chapter 20, verse 5 to 6. Well, why, well, why aren't you reading verse 5? Well, whether it be Numbers chapter 14, verse 18, or Exodus chapter 20, verse 5. So verse 18, it's easy for you to realize. So I was like, which verse should we use? And I ended up using Numbers chapter 14, verse 18. So if you use this, those who betray forced at repentance, who do this and depart, Numbers chapter 14, verse 33, their whole lives, they will be like living in the, in the desert. They will suffer. They will make their children disobedient and their lives will end in a dirty way. So those people who act as if they're better and yet they don't know the mystery of God, you see what happens to them later. You see what happens to their children. They don't have disobedient children. God says, the truth says, they won't have it. What, and then you expect your children to do well? What, they came first in school? So what? When they're idiots. Why are they idiots? Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 26. If you catch a cow, but you and your children can't eat it, you catch this cow in the freezing cold, and then you're over in the corner, you know, starving, how can you call that success? You need to wake up. You don't know what success is. You, you're just crazy about money. And after you earn money, you buy a horse. After you buy a horse, you try to get a servant. Once you have a servant, you try to have some high seat. Why? In order to gain some fame. But is that fame? When bulls fight and they have, you know, flowers put around their neck, but are they... They're, they're fighting to the point of death, what, to get flowers put around their neck? There are so many people like this, that in this world. What's my life like? And what about and my children? What? Which way do you want them to go? Let's read together. Numbers chapter 14, verse 18. Jehovah is slow to anger and abundant in loving kindness, forgiving iniquity and transgression. But he will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children to the third and the fourth generations. So who has spoken this? Jehovah, who is in control of life and death? Who is Jehovah? So there's two types of God. There's the fake God, those shamans and fortune tellers and those, those, those lying religions that men have made. That's the, but the true God is Jehovah. That's Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 10. The true God, even now, is working. So it's when you're in forced at repentance, the, the mystery of Christ, that's when he heals your diseases, even your heredity, the diseases of heredity. If you do forced at repentance, the mystery of God, then there is no past. You're a new blessed man. So just a moment ago, you may have been a prostitute, 
You know, I sold alcohol. I sold my body because I needed some money. Well, you don't have a past. That's Matthew chapter 1 verse 5. Even Rahab the prostitute, who sold her body, who sold alcohol, in Christ there is no past. So please, what you've memorized with your head with demons, that past, they're saying, aren't you a prostitute? No, that's not me. Oh, weren't you a bad fruit for a hundred years? No, that's not me. Why? Because you've been grafted in. This is faith. This is faith to have a new, it's a new start. You're a new person. There is no past. Because I live like this, you know, out of sinners, no one could compare with me. However, I'm not the person of my past. At this time, you're not. You're a, you're a true son of God. We've come to receive blessings, to do well, to save my children. Let's only receive this blessing. So God says, if you do forced repentance and you're in Christ, if you just say with your mouth, Father, then he's going to be responsible. Why is it you can't receive what God's giving? It's because of sin. So because we don't have time, we're going to go to... We're going to go to Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 20. So no matter how much you try, things aren't working. Why? Because of sin. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 20. So Jehovah, so it's verse 21. 20. So Jehovah will, will send upon you. So because of the because of the evil of your deeds. So outside of Christ, it's all evil. Outside of Christ, do you have anything to do with the Bible or with God? But these people who don't do the mystery of God, and they say, I believe. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 12. If you don't do four-step repentance, if you're not inside of him, you have nothing to do with the Bible, you have nothing to do with God. It's, there are, you know, there are so many fakes running rampant. We have to end this. But you see these insane people. Evil and good. <coughs> God's work says clearly. But it says beware. <coughs> but these people say, I couldn't help it but go and listen to that. What, you couldn't help but die and kill your children three, four generations? You couldn't help but bring curses upon your country? When you see how people say that, you can see they're filthy demons. Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. They're Beasts that are perishing, I have nothing to do with them. They're filthy dog pigs. You know, if God leaves them alone, Romans chapter 1 verse 28, who does God leave alone? Those who slander others. Then three and four generations, it's the death sentence, Romans chapter 1 verse 32. So those people who slander our church, you see these young people, within a few days they die from cancer or they die in some accident. Why do you want to receive that disaster? You and I, you know, when we sin and we forget about it, these disasters come and yet we don't know. That's what it's saying here. If you can remember your sins, <coughs> but here it says, even if you forget them, it says, so you have done these evil deeds and, you, and you've forgotten them. <coughs> there are people here who work so hard and yet they can't feed themselves. They say, well, I'm so unfortunate. And then they say, well, let's protest. You know, and then, you know, let's, let's, let's divide it up amongst themselves. What your ancestors, what you have done, he has judged you exactly. Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 20, Romans chapter 2, verse 6. So how how is it you don't know how to repent and you say those things? No matter how hard you work, you still can't feed yourself. You see the North Koreans, are they playing around? No, they go out at dawn and come in at, at, um, at come in the night. But you have to repent of your sins and your ancestors' sins. You have to meet the Lord. Before you do this, no matter how hard you work, it's not going to work. You see those countries that scorn God's word, see if they live well. On the other hand, 
even though they don't have Jehovah or the mystery of God, that country that still pretends to believe well, they still live the most well off. But Korea has received the mystery of God. It's a mystery. It's a mystery. So in the world, Korea will become the strongest nation. It will save the world. It's Korea that will do this. Is this amen? You say that we're small, but we have this mystery. But our country has the mystery. Korea, which has the mystery of God, it will become top in the world. You know, after America and after England, where is it that people are keeping their eyes and ears open? On Korea. Already, God. It's Jehovah who, who's in control of life and death, but he's, he's put us already third in the world. And even those two other countries, they have to receive the help of the Eagle of the East. We have to live by the mystery of God. This is a blessing we've come for. We will do well. Korea will do well. And that's why a blessed man, if there is one lamp, that whole house is light. If you become a blessed man, a man of understanding, what do you receive? You receive wisdom and knowledge. What is wisdom and knowledge? The wisdom and knowledge of the heart is the greatest. So you become strong and powerful. Proverbs chapter 24, verse 5. Because we don't have time, I'm sorry. But you become chief in the world. And that's why Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1 to 2. If you just obey my word, though it's not being chief in, in the East, it is to be best in the world, the greatest in the world. So, so that's what this gospel is. By this gospel, he wants. so we have to do well. All this time that you didn't do well, well, you have to come here to become chief in the world. Individually, in your family, in the in our country, and to save the world. That's why he's guided you. So be thankful. Be thankful. Be thankful. No matter how much you work your hands, if you do evil and you forget, if you forget, have you repented or not? So if you haven't repented, that sin remains. Where sin remains, 1 John chapter 3, verse 8, demons stick. So you look at that person's actions, they're, they're strange. Oh, that person, they wouldn't do that, and yet they did. Even the day before, someone, it came out of the news that someone headbutted a government official. Oh, that person isn't someone who would do that. But there's someone who scorns God's word, who does evil. Whether it, what is evil? It is sin. What follows sin? Disasters. So on the news, he's had to have that shame. Other people, you know, other people can hold their head up in, in the news, but he had to turn his head around. Who is that? When you and I sin and we don't repent, what our ancestors, what they haven't repented, that's what comes down to us. So we have to, we have to shout this out aloud. And we have to, we have to proclaim this. Isaiah chapter fifty-eight, verse one. So, if you heard this, you have to do the mystery of God and become someone without a past, someone who is unfortunate, who becomes blessed. So then, those disasters that followed, they they changed the blessings. So, how good is this? You say that if you're diligent with your hands, that you won't starve. Well, the Father says you will starve. Don't criticize. Why? Because. It's because we've sinned and we haven't repented. We didn't have the mystery of God. So no matter how much you may go out at dawn and come back at twilight, and no matter how diligent you you are with your hands, here it says, in all that you undertake, 
He's going to give you disasters. Because you're outside of Christ, He's going to repay you with disasters. So if you don't do the mystery of God, f o r c e d at repentance, it is all curses. Galatians chapter 1, verse 1 to 10. And then it says, so curses, confusion. So this confusion is all your worries and fear and anxiety. If you don't do f o r c e d at repentance, these people come out on TV, they don't even know how to be ashamed. These ladies in their 40s come out and they say, oh, the Korean economy. You know, in your 40s, you become retired. So we're so, we're so afraid. Well, if you don't repent, then you're afraid. So if you do this evil and you don't repent, then, then you'll have curses and confusion, confusion. So Job, he may have attended church. But he worried, he, he was anxious, and he killed all his ten children, and all his wealth disappeared. So these people coming on TV, I'd say to them, you're a fake Christian. You know, how can you talk about worrying and receiving disasters? You're killing all your children. You know, if you said that, then they wouldn't say anything. But, but they dragged this out for an hour. You know, they cut across somewhere and they come back and they're still going on. We need to wake up. If you sin and you, and you don't repent, no matter what you do, there's nothing but curses. You won't be released. And you always feel fear and worries and anxious. And your children won't do well. Your business will, will be ruined. And not just that, you'll receive rebuke. But when you receive this rebuke, if you quickly do false s e p a r a n c e you realize and you turn around, then you'd fix your destiny. But you can't realize, and so you receive these disasters. You suffer. So all these, so all these disasters will come. And it says, until you are destroyed, until you perish quickly. You know, in our country, it's the Liberal Party that... They, they lasted a long time, but they killed many people. They killed all these people. But because they've killed these lives that are worth more than the world, you think they're going to receive blessings? But they lasted a while. All these, do you know how many fake elders there were in those times? You know, in Korea, there was no one who wasn't an elder at that time. So then God, he waited and waited. And in the end, he... You know, he, so even now, God is creating. He's the true God that is Jehovah. So if you don't know Jehovah, you'll be ruined. Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 11 and verse 21 here says, Jehovah, so if you sin and you don't repent and your ancestors didn't and you have those sins, no matter how much what you do with your hands, you're not going to do well. I'm sure you've heard in Busan, you know, someone graduated first um, in medical studies. This doctor was saying, but every time he opens up at a, a, a practice, he's ruined, even though he came first in school. So he's sinned, but he hasn't repented. His ancestors have sinned and haven't repented, and he's, it's been passed down. So no matter how diligent you are in the world, no matter how much you try, it doesn't work. But here, the way to live is this mystery. We will live because of this mystery. Is this amen? This is the blessing we've come for. This is the key of solutions. So do you want to pass this down to your children? Do you want to live like this? You know, after I've realized the word, sometimes, you know, I hit the roof. You know, I say, who is it? And I end up, it's me. And I end up seeing it's me. It's me that's ruined my children and ruined the world. I mean, ruined the country. So it's me that is, you know, I say I am the worst of sinners, the worst. So I end up, you know, having to confess that. But because people don't understand. If our ancestors had known this, they wouldn't have Romans chapter 3 verse 4, all men are liars. So because they're liars, they have demons. 1 John chapter 3 verse 8. So 
you know, how can you believe in a religion that they have made? This word is truth. It doesn't change eternally. So if you still can't realize, even after being ruined, then that's when he gives you pestilence. So verse 21. So what does Jehovah do? He makes alive or dead. He's in control of, he controls um, 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 5 to 10. So if you meet Jehovah, even from the trash can, he can make flowers bloom. That's verse 9 and 10. So Jehovah will make the pestilence cling to you when? When you sin and you forget and you don't repent. If your ancestors have sinned and they've passed it down to you, then you will get this pestilence. And it says, until it has consumed you from the land where you're entering to possess it. So he's promised you blessings, but even if you enter, you'll be ruined. In the Exodus, the Israelites, they followed Moses out. But did they enter Canaan or did they all die? Those who grumbled and complained, those who sinned and didn't repent, they all died in the desert. If you read Hebrews chapter 3, and it says it was the new, the new, the children that sprouted, they the ones that entered. So even if you have one sin that you committed that you didn't repent of and what your ancestors have passed down, but so this disease, it means you're the, why is it if you have disease, you're the worst? Because you've, you're have you killing yourself and three and four generations. And you bring curses upon the country. That's Proverbs chapter 14, verse 34. What, you're saying you're still not a bad person? Someone who kills their own children, no one's going to call them praiseworthy. But if you sin and you don't repent even of one thing, you're killing three and four generations, and yet you call that person respectworthy, it's so sad. After you sin, whether you've forgotten or not, you'll be ruined and ruined until the point where you get pestilence. So God says, if you sin and you let it remain, then first of all, he, you're going to be ruined financially. Your workplace isn't going to do well. You say it's because you've been retired. He, God says, God points out it's because of your sin. And then if you still can't realize, he'll give you pestilence. So even Canaan, which is a promise, which is a promised blessing. You won't be able to enter. And even if you enter, you can't receive blessings. So this is something so scary. So what is it that we have to do? All we have to do is repent. All we have to do is repent. All we have to do is the mystery of God, forced at repentance. So whatever disease it is, or whatever it is that you're doing that isn't being released. Oh, my, you know, my children. You know, it's so unfair because, so, so verse 21, Jehovah, so what you do, he'll make you ruined. And even if you get pestilence and you can't realize that he's going to hit you with, with nature. So even the weather will report, they're saying more and more the natural disasters will get worse. If you say you're going to build a building so they can withstand these natural disasters. God will smash it, Na Nahum chapter 1. God says, if you don't listen to my words, I'm going to hit you with natural disasters, with earthquakes, too much rain, or not enough rain. So the third thing in this order of how he hits you because of sin is natural disasters. So Jehovah will smite you with consumption, and with fever, so if he gives you all disease and you cannot realize, and with inflammation and with fiery heat, so now here it's with the with the weather, with fiery heat, with the sword, and with blight, and with mildew. So once he hits you like this, the whole country is ruined. When? When you sin and you don't repent. So which family can survive? Which country can survive? So if you go to Africa, you know, they're all struggling there. But in the past, in the time of Noah, they it, it, they were like such a strong nation. But it's after opposing Moses. What's happened to the descendants? They've become beggars in the world. 
So without us realizing, we think that we're repenting, but already we're outside of Christ. So in my life, you know, why is it that the natural, you know, nature's overtaking my, my... So no matter how hard you work, it doesn't work. Even if you... So you may get pestilence and even nature harms you. So what state am I in? So if you're feeling so hopeless, you think the UN can help you? What What is it that the UN can do? Each country, if they don't pay fees, then those people in the UN, they're not going to get paid. They'll all go home. So we heard on the news, the UN takes the money to you know, goes to help a country, but they end up using all that money just on their own showers. Well, what's that saying? So, it's God that has done everything. As long as we do the mystery of God, our diseases will will depart. Our disasters will depart. Is this amen? So, if we repent, then happiness comes to me. Romans chapter 4, verse 6, to those who repent, God gives them happiness straight away. At this time, let's be happy. When we do foster repentance, we're, we're happy. We overflow with joy. We overflow with thanksgiving. So let's call upon the Lord three times. And if we repent, all those things that aren't being released, no matter, even if we get some, you know, license or patent or all those things will work out. Is it some pestilence what disease is it it'll all be solved natural disasters they'll all be blocked what a blessed promise this is and yet you're going to live still letting that sin remain you're going to pass it down to your children and do things where you're going to kill three and four generations let's not become someone so evil anyone can become a blessed person still if that bad fruit is grafted in as a good fruit then there is no past. You are a good fruit. Let's all receive this blessing and have a new start. Let's receive power. So let's call upon the Lord three times. As long as we become righteous, Romans chapter 10, verse 24, God will heal all your prayers. All you have to do is speak. If you become righteous, if you've repented of your sins and you become righteous, everything you pray for, everything you you seek, you'll receive. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 24. So if you say, oh, my disease is urgent, have it healed. Whatever disaster, let's have it released. Let's save our children. So let's first be released and then pray for our neighbors for three minutes. Lord, 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 may we depend on the mystery of God and we confess our sins. Jehovah, I am the sinner. Father, I am the sinner. I am the worst of sinners. I've sinned and forgotten. And so that's why pestilence has come, why the, these natural disasters have come. Today, may we end it. Have pity on us. Almighty Jehovah, I've sinned and I've forgotten my ancestors' sins because we didn't know the mystery of God. They just passed it down to us. And we've been we've been suffering because of the demons that stick to those sins. Wherever we go, we receive disasters and curses. Our lives haven't worked out today by the mystery of God. May we confess our sins. May we be forgiven and become sons of God. The curses now depart. Demons all be cast out. The, the, the diseases all be cast out. May this country and people become the evil of the East that saves the world. We're one people. But because North Korea, they didn't know and they lived by evil. Father, even those people, by this mystery, may they become a blessed man. Whether it be individual problems or 
you know, problems with disease or even with natural nature may all be solved. And now, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the great love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit from this time forth. Those sins that I've forgotten, when I look at others, may I realize that as my sin is my mirror, and as as and as I'm forgiven, may the disasters and curses depart. The the diseases coming to our family, may they all depart, and may you may even natural disasters be blocked. May I do well. May I save my children. May I be patriots to my country. Those people are determined on them, their businesses, their family, on Korea. May you be with them now and forevermore. In the Lord's name I bless. Amen.